Hi, Professor Zoltan. What do you want to talk about today? Me? I think this is something that uh, is very uh, important for many. It's not only about me. The point is that we will talk about the water scarcity and food security in Africa, in the special circumstances of Africa. What do you call water scarcity? Very good question. It's a relative term. In fact, water scarcity uh, in practice means that when there is not that much water available that was before. So water scarcity in the Sahara or in the Sahel is completely different from water scarcity in a, a tropical environment. And how does that affect people in, the, in these environments? The difficulty is always that uh, people have a developed way of living in these environments and uh, they adjust their activities to the uh, environmental circumstances. If there is less water than before, it will disturb their food production and that, uh, therefore water scarcity, uh, scarcity will lead to uh, food security problems. Yeah, and uh, are we talking about no water at all or is there some different levels of uh, when does it becomes a problem do you know in fact it is becoming a problem two ways one is in a total uh, amount of water whether the total amount of water is available there what was before but also the temporal distribution of the water is extremely important so water scarcity can occur even with a relatively high amount of water but not properly distributed as it was before in that particular environment so water scarcity is a very dynamic uh, topic and therefore it needs continuous monitoring and that's where Earth observation can come and help. Okay, so we're talking now about uh, satellite images and monitoring water from above? Definitely. And uh, in fact, uh, what I am focusing at, that is Africa. In Africa, the environmental circumstances are uh, extremes. In many cases, let's think about from uh, the Sahara, you go down and you arrive uh, to the uh, rainforests of uh, Congo and you go even further down to uh, South Africa and then you remember that it was not uh, long ago that in Cape Town there was an enormous water crisis because of uh, a, a extended drought yes. and uh, water scarcity. And how, do we, how does Earth observation help? First of all, uh, Earth observation helps by collecting data where you cannot collect data other ways. And uh, that, uh, that is uh, not only that you can collect data, but you can collect data spatially distributed. That means that for each and uh, every location of the surface, you can make a measurement about, depending on, of course on the technologies that you are uh, using. Isn't it easier to just uh set ground stations uh, measuring? Very good. But setting ground stations would mean uh, creating a very dense network. How dense it should be? Imagine that on a satellite image uh, you can have a surface area represented of 5 by 5 meters or 10 by 10 meters. Can you uh, implement that many stations? No, I don't think so. <laughs> so that is, <laughs> would be very difficult to that transfer is data. On the one and hand, and I think it would be very, very uh, uh, space consuming, then there would be no space left for agriculture production, I guess. <laughs> so. Okay, so when we look from above, what do we see from satellites? That's very interesting. In fact, what we see is um, the electromagnetic radiation, usually. Let's uh, put it aside that you can also use uh, gravimetry, so gravity uh, field uh, measurements, but electromagnetic radiation. And with electromagnetic radiation, you can get proxies to many other physical processes. Since the electromag it, it, electromagnetic ra radiation is basically light? Light or it's more and light? many more okay. wavelengths. Mm -hmm. So that means that the whole spectrum that the sun is emitting and that the Earth is emitting, because the Earth is also emitting electromagnetic radiation, that can be measured. And if you can measure these uh, uh, different wavelengths, you will get different kind of uh, uh, information, because you will get 
uh, interactions between the surface and the incoming electromagnetic radiation or the emitted uh, electromagnetic radiation of the surface, which is uh, influenced by many other physical processes, for example, by water. And the presence of water can be identified this way. Okay, so once we know there is water or there is no water, what do we do with the information? First of all, when you measure, you measure in a certain moment of time. That will be a snapshot of the actual situation. If you measure more times, then you will have a time series and you can follow how the processes are happening on the surface. So, for example, imagine flood, when we can measure water or no water. If we measure it frequently enough, then we can see that how the flood is progressing. Is the flood is just inundating the surface? Is it uh, stagnating on the surface? Or is it retreating and the surface is drying out? And this is the simplest uh, way of using Earth's observation. Okay, so you were talking all the time about Africa. Uh, you are working with Africa, so what, what is happening there right now? What, what are you doing there right now? Uh, what we are, we are uh, running there a big project. The project aims at uh, supporting research in water scarcity and food security in Africa. And that is a special research, a so-called capacity development research. And we aim at supporting the researchers, the African researchers, in uh, using the newest technologies like co cloud computing, uh, big data, uh, and so on, for the specific African problems. And in this project, we are providing uh, support to small research projects. And uh, these research projects should aim at this topic and specific African problems. And the research project should be run by uh, two partners, an African and a European partner uh, in tandem. The basic idea is that we can improve the capacity by doing the research together in a field which, uh, that is extremely important for Africa. And the, on the other hand, the in a technology which is usually developed outside Africa, but this way we can contribute to developing the use of the technology within Africa. And we see this is a very important thing. And this is called the EU Africa Initiative. Um, why is it so important that they do it themselves and not that we, we could also do the research here and provide results? Um, you know, this is like uh, in the Bible that we don't te uh, teach them uh, to, uh, we don't give them fish, but we give them net and we teach them how to fish. The idea is that if they are doing it themselves, then they can find the really uh, uh, adequate solutions for the problems and they become partner in it. Very good. And uh, are, are people submitting proposals for this project? How, how does it work with? It will work that way that uh, soon we will release a call. In fact, after a year we will release a second call. And these calls are for uh, research ideas by these tandems, a European and African uh, researcher or researcher group. And uh, they will start to work on their uh, project sometime in February from now. And then uh, after a year, they will have to provide a report and they have to publish their results. And they will have to provide also the workflows, the data and everything that is related to the results of the research uh, in an open uh, science manner. Oh, very good. And um, well, the project is more or less starting now. How do you see this after, I don't know, five years? How long is the project? Wow. Very good question, but uh, it is not only starting from now, because the European Space Agency had a um, project before, in fact, a series of projects before, the so-called TIGER initiative and the TIGER capacity building uh, facility, which aimed at similar things. And there were already this kind of research projects, series of research projects carried out in Africa before. There were about 70 different kinds of small projects. And uh, as you see, now we are continuing. 
that time uh, we were using those uh, technologies which were available uh, 10 years ago. Now we try to int introduce, and in fact we are introducing the new technologies and the newest uh, possible uh, data and uh, analysis methods. Do you want to be a GeoHero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our GeoHeroes posts a new video.